There is great excitement in this truly magnificent foyer of the lovely Mecca Cinema, which tonight, with a fitting show of respect, has suspended its usual bingo session. <laughs> The glittering names of the entertainment business have turned out in force to line the lovely purple and black carpet under the plastic chandeliers. <laughs> and now I've just had a signal that the Duchess of Brenda's car is arriving, so let's go outside and join the crowds. A smart young lady from one of the Commonwealth countries is obviously eager to pay her respects to the Duchess. Grace's chauffeur has parked illegally. Now he is being directed to a parking meter. <laughs> so the red carpet will have to follow too. A delightfully informal text that the Grace, the Duchess of Brenda, has paused to chat with the Turf Accountant next week. Do you believe yes? Here she comes. <laughs> a little trip there, but not quite. Night to remember, too, for the lady in the box office. Doubtless something to tell her grandchildren about. She's craning forward for a glimpse of the Duchess. No, I'm wrong. Her grace had forgotten to purchase her ticket. There's a new attention as she fishes in her handbag. And yes, we can all relax now. She gives the cashier a 50 pence piece. It is, I think, the Duchess's great composure in moments of crisis like that that have endeared her to the nation. And now, in the inner foyer, Clovisa, the manager's little daughter, is about to make the customary presentation to her grace. The Duchess gracefully accepts a beef burger with onions. <laughs> <laughs> Rather a tense moment then. However, there was no threat to her grace's safety. It seems the man was an autograph hunter, unfamiliar with the protocol of such an occasion. The Duchess of Brenda, reluctantly, I often feel, cannot give autographs. On the one occasion she put her signature to a piece of paper in Leeds, she unwittingly extended the licensing hours of the public houses throughout the West Riding. <laughs> For the first time ever, we are privileged to hear the conversation between our distinguished guest and a few of the show business personalities who, like her grace, are enjoying an evening at the pictures. She's chatting now with my lady Deatrick and probably thinking of her own famous grandmother. More rain about, I think. <laughs> Awfully good for the gardens, there. <laughs> what a lovely garden. Is it Norman Hartnell's? No, it's my own. <laughs> well, that's something. <laughs> Cheerio. <laughs> Nessie O'Shame, now. How to do? <laughs> coming across from America to meet you. I'm beloved over there, you know. That's the only word for it, beloved. <laughs> the Duke's a great fan of yours, but I've always hated you. <laughs> oh, New York. I'm very big at the palace, love. So am I. <laughs> With such a large and glittering array of talent, her grace can pause only briefly for a friendly word here and a smile there. And now she's about to meet the popular jockey, Lester Piglet. <laughs> Camera and microphone back away, ready for her entrance to the auditorium. Everyone waiting patiently while her grace continues to chat to <laughs> Lester Piglet. Now, moving away from Lester Piglet, her grace is now being introduced to... Oh, God. Scobie Breezley. <laughs> I can 
Charlie, Jack Benny. Your Grace, there's something that I've been dying to ask you. No, I don't get paid either. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's not that. But you meet all those people and you shake hundreds of hands. I guess the adulation's all right, but don't you ever feel that just one more handshake and your arm will drop off? How true. <laughs> <laughs>